Hello everyone, Kevin Carrillo here and welcome to another episode of the Cannabinoid Connect Podcast. My guests today are Patrick Pope and Liz Grow, co-founders of Grow House Media. And I'm just going to start recording. Um, Great, sounds good. Yeah, just kind of keep this thing informal. So um, thanks again, guys. I really appreciate you coming on. And, and before we start recording for, for the audience listening, uh, we have Patrick Pope on and Liz Grow, and they are the owners of Grow House Texas, which explores modern American cannabis culture across the nation. And I know specifically right now, y'all are focused on Texas. So before we get into all that, Liz, I got to ask you, is your last name really Grow? Or did you just make when you when you came into the cannabis industry? No, that, Grow is my last name. It's my It's my family name. I mean, I have um, we, we're a mil big military family, so I have military photos in the house with, you know, the actual, you know, name. I didn't like it when I was a kid, I, you know, because it got made fun of, but um, I love it now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so awesome. And that's exactly what, you know, I follow y'all on, on Instagram. And if, if anybody listening, you should definitely follow them. Very entertaining and, and uh, in, insightful, informative content. Also, I know you guys go live on Instagram and it's, it's Grow House tx right is that the the um yes okay yeah the yeah. handles grow house tx and our company is grow house media um and so here's something exciting we are, are i think our site's gonna launch today um and that site is growhousemedia.co not dot com somebody had the dot com so we got the dot co <laughs> <laughs> the dot co or the dot io um right and, oh, yeah. What is that even? <laughs> it doesn't really matter. As long as your SEO and people like know about you and they're searching for you, the dot com, it's all irrelevant. You know, it's really what people are searching for. So, um, yeah. And so, yeah, but that's exciting. That's exciting. Yeah. Congratulations on the website. That's huge. Everybody, you heard it first from Patrick and Liz that the, uh, the website's uh, launching today. So go check it out. So, guys, before we jump into all the great work you're doing, um, let's talk a little bit about your background. So, Liz, let's start with you. Um, have you always been a cannabis advocate? Uh, like, when did you start your journey and, and what brought you to, to this industry? Wow. So, you know, I haven't always been a cannabis advocate. Um, I became an advocate uh, when I was 30 um, and living in San Francisco. Um, I, needed, uh, I needed the plant for depression and anxiety. Um, I didn't want to take um, anti-anxiety medication and uh, I was really, I mean, I just really felt lost and um, my doctor, you know, it was legal in San Francisco, thankfully. And so I was educated on the plant and um, how it could help me for, you know, my, you know, current kind of mental health stuff at the time. And it was just, it, it just blew my mind that we didn't have access to this plant in Texas. You know, I'm a Texas girl and um, we're native Texans and I only lived in San Francisco for a, a short time, but um, I was just like, no, there's no way, there's no way I'm going to let this stand in my home state. Like, and I don't, what if, I don't know what that meant. It's not like I was in the cannabis industry, but I'm just, I, I just knew that I had to spread the word about this incredible plant and start to break down some of the stigmas that, um, that existed, especially yeah. in over cannabis so awesome that, that your personal experience helped fuel your passion and your drive today um yeah. comes to advocacy and so when when your doctor obviously like you said california is a medical state at the time so uh -huh. like that's different from other non-medical states right so when the mm -hmm. doctor approached you with cannabis like did she did she ha have a lot a lot of um insight in terms of like the, the medicinal value and how it could help with your depression and like specific things like that? Or did she kind of just say, maybe try this as an alternative? Yeah, that's exactly what she said. Try this as an alternative. Um, I can give you, you know, I, I can refer you to a good dispensary where you'll feel safe. Um, you know, I can, uh, they can help you find something that you are looking for. So it was really a, it was less prescriptive, I think, than here, take 
you know, Xanax before you go to sleep at night. Right. Um, but more about, you know, exploration um, and, and come back next week and let me know what you think. And I never went back. <laughs> um, <laughs> I never went back to see her. I probably should have thanked her. But um, it, I, I instantly, I could instantly sleep, you know, and so that was, it's kind of a snowball effect, right? You know, we find that with cannabis. We'll start using it and it's like, whoa, I've got this incredible um, relief in this area. And then you start to find that it improves other areas as well of your life and yeah. you know, of health. And, and so, yeah. And think about how like slowly we're even kind of figuring the plan out, right? Of course, due to the, the federal regulation and the, the lack of you know, peer review studies because of that federal regulation. But the little things that we are finding out, I mean, we're just scratching the surface, right? I mean, it's... Oh. We're talking about CBD, CBG, uh, you know, THCs, obviously, but there's over 150 cannabinoids in the plant. So um, we're still, yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, and so so Patrick, before we get too deep, I wanna I wanna hear about your background. So I did some research, man, and I saw your 2016 reel um, uh, on YouTube, and you are one talented actor. I will tell you, <laughs> I am not, and I'm not just saying that, man. You you're good. You're Good. Oh, well, well, thanks. I, you know, I, Liz and I actually met um, in high school theater class, believe it or not. I was a freshman. She, she was a sophomore. Wow. And uh, <laughs> I remember, I remember that the, the uh, first day assignment was like, get a scene partner. You're all going to do a scene. And Liz just looked over at me and was like, you want to be my scene partner? And I could awesome, <laughs> rad, cool chick wanted to be my scene partner. So I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> I'll say this though, Patrick had been working as an actor as a kid. A kid. Yeah. So I knew that this kid knew what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Patrick is a great actor. Thank you for mentioning that. Yeah. Yeah. That makes so much sense though, because uh, I can see your on-screen chemistry with your, your short videos that you do. Um, and it's like, you're so in sync with one another. So- I've been doing it for a while. <laughs> A while, exactly. That's so awesome. Wow. And what, what, where, what part of Texas did y'all uh, grow up in? We grew up in New Braunfels, and that's actually where we still live. Where, where we, I moved away. We both moved away out of the mm-hmm. state for quite a long time, and then, um, in, high school. in our adult lives, uh, came back to Austin and uh, bumped into each other magically one day at Barton Springs, and the rest was history. Yeah. Kind of just saw very kindred and great friends in high school, but things just a little different as uh, as we've gotten older. <laughs> yeah. And, so was cannabis kind of a natural, um, you know, transition once y'all, you know, became a, a couple, I guess at that point you thought you were both advocates and let's, let's do this, let's pivot our media company to really focus on the cannabis industry or how did that all play out? Well, I, I it was, it, uh, yes, it, it's to some degree, yes, but uh, we started dating and um, I, I, I grew up acting, but ultimately started to lose my drive for the competition of it. So I, and, and I'm a little bit more just producer director minded. And so I went out of college, went straight into production, produced movies, uh, and then got really into the digital media side of things and worked with some pretty big companies, uh, Disney, Snapchat, um, and did a lot of really cool, awesome um Ex- chive. Ex- ex- the chive for a second, rooster teeth. Uh, but but my job was always upping the creative and and building new content for brands. And uh, in doing that, when when I was working in Austin, I just was getting a little burnt out making cool stuff for other people and giving them all of these awesome ideas that were coming out of my head. And I think Liz saw that. And I had m- moved back, moved to Austin from California, where I was into cannabis and um, used it for creativity and, and um, uh, loved how free California was with it. So when I moved back to Texas, I was determined to get involved with normal or any other groups that I could to start advocating in my home state. Liz had that same energy. We're both uh, into creating content. I was a, I'm a producer by profession and it was just sort of all those pieces yeah yes, we're, we're right there. And it was Liz who was like, let's make, let's make a media company and go and tell cannabis positive stories yeah, and shine a light, destigmatize, normalize, and give people a place to come so that they can learn about cannabis in Texas. And that is what we've been doing for two and a half years and, uh, and, and continue. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I saw the, how hard y'all were working also um, at the, the recent um, hemp 
kind of festival or event that was um, in Bishop Arts District. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. In my neighborhood, yeah. And so, um, you know, that was really cool to see all, and you had all the equipment and, and you were getting really great shots of, of the cultivators and, and their booths and stuff. So um, let's, let's talk about that. So what has your experience been uh, traveling all throughout the state of Texas and meeting with these farmers and these farms? Um, like, what's the vibe like, you know, right now? And, if, and especially for those listening, it, it being its first grow season, Texas is its first uh, hemp grow season this year. Oh my God, it's so exciting. And there's so much hope. There's so much optimism. There's just so much energy around the fact that we have cannabis legal in Texas. Okay, now we're not that, you know, not that strong on the THC side yet, but we're talking about a cannabinoid here. Mm -hmm. We have legal cannabis in, in Texas. And let me tell you, these cultivators, they don't play when it comes to terps. They understand that they've got to, you know, you've got to keep your THC at a level that you won't feel it. And so they're really compensating with their ability to bring out the best um, in these terpene profiles. Um, and so I, I'm just, I'm thrilled. It's like our dream come true. You know, I knew that Texas would, I knew that Texas growers would, would just, just crush it. And um, that's what we're seeing now. So that's well, and ju just to give you a little context here, we've been traveling the state because mm -hmm. we've been shooting a docu-series um, pretty much since uh, April. Yeah. Um, uh, tracking six different farmers from around Texas from seed to harvest and a little bit beyond that, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and so we been traveling over Texas, meet, you know, on farms quite a bit filming with these with these um amazing individuals all of them characters dr yeah. driven driven in their own way like just they have so much light and love for the plant in their eyes but they're hard hard working americans hard working texans i mean they have gone all in on this plant and the devotion the care the precision the effort that they mm -hmm. that they have given is heroic mm -hmm. because no one's ever grown cannabis in texas legally, uh, legally and albeit hemp um the hemp plant uh, is successful here because of these people. Yeah. Right. So be, being able to be around them and see that love that they have and at the same time put cameras on it all over it's it. A dream. We can't wait to release the docu-series. So it's, it's, it, you'll get, you'll, you and your, uh, your listeners will get a firsthand look as well. Definitely. <laughs> um, we have, there's an Instagram account, uh, Big Texas Hemp. And that is, it's like our behind the scenes. It's all of, you know, just really beautiful photography and, um, you know, are some really gorgeous shots that will 100% be in the series. You know, we don't want to show everything or give it all away, but there's just too much good information. And when we're just taking too much, we just have too much good content to keep it all to mm -hmm. ourselves. So Big Texas Hemp is a, that's a great account to follow to, you know, have your finger on the pulse of the Texas Hemp mm -hmm. movement. Yeah. And, uh, and if there's any clips or anything that you'd like me to share with my audience and, and tag you guys and let you know, I mean, we're happy to do that also to kind of drip it out because that sounds like a docuseries. Um, and speaking of that docuseries, so, I mean, you're right in terms of like Texas farmers, it's very legacy, right? There's a lot of families that have been uh, growing different crops for years and years, and it just seems like a natural pivot for these farmers to move into hemp uh, due to the, the recent 2018 farm bill, right? Uh, oh, yeah. So and, and you know so so but you said that you mentioned you you started shooting in april of this year so that was at the height of the of the covid lockdown right so did that in any way kind of inhibit what you guys were doing did it did it change the direction of your film i mean how did all that play out covid really inspired it because we we were um you know obviously texas production company. We're a Texas production company telling the story of the plant in Texas, but we were also pushing projects, uh, you know, in, in LA. So we were split, we were going to LA quite a bit before the lockdown, um, at least twice a month mm -hmm. and, and pitching projects or shooting things. When we were forced to sort of lock down and stay in, that made us really focus on, okay, we're pivoting our entire plan for the year, obviously. What can we do now in our own state? So the inspiration mm -hmm. actually came because of lockdown. And it was like, look, yep. we have farmers growing the plant for the first time in 80 years in Texas. Let's get on it. Let's make this, yeah. let's, let's tell their story. And so that's, that's how it was born. And let's tell a story in a way that is deserving of the plant and the people bringing this plant to market. You know, iPhones are great. We love them. You know, Steven Soderbergh shoots movies on them. But 
um, we want to bring out the bigger guns, like the very the, the big equipment, the lenses. The uh, we want to make this experience cinematic for viewers at home, mm -hmm. just to bring you into a completely new unknown world of hemp farming, um, and the drama that goes along with it, and the importance of hemp farming, not just for you know ourselves and in our own you know personal health and well being, but for our planet for our topsoil. You know, there are just so many reasons why um, this hemp movement is so exciting and why the Texas hemp movement specifically is so exciting that, um, you know, we want to make that sexy and, and exciting for, for viewers everywhere. No, that's beautiful. And I, I, can, t I can relate to y'all's story in the sense that um, the, the pandemic also helped kind of push me do what I'm doing, what I'm doing today with the podcast. So, you know, March, end of March, um, the company that I'm working for does layoffs. I'm part of that layoff team. Right. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, what am I going to do next? I have my social media marketing agency where I, I help clients, but I'm thinking now's the time to, to really talk about this. I've, I've been a user and advocate for years, but I just thought, you know, based on my previous skill in corporate America with, you know, talking with people, doing media interviews, marketing, things like that, I thought, let's do this. And really the goal, like you said before, is removing that stigma, you know, having experts on, guests on that are, that are on the front lines like yourselves um, and talk about this, this as a plant, right? Um, and, and how it's, it's beneficial, like you said, not only for therapeutic and medicinal reasons, but also for the environment, because there's a lot of sustainable properties that come with the cannabis plant. So, oh, absolutely, yes. that, absolutely, and it all starts with, like Kevin, just hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just transition. I'm gonna take my skills, and I'm going to dedicate those skills to cannabis and the growth of the movement. And um, so many, we we talked to so many people who have, who are doing that, who are making the transition, and they've never been happier. And it's just. I mean, it's a win-win because this space is just so new. We need competent spokespeople, man. Like, so I'm so glad. We were so glad that when we found you mm -hmm. and doing what you're doing. Like, we're, we're big fans. Well, I, was I appreciate you saying that. And I was excited for you, for y'all to agree to come on. Um, and so, yeah, not to, to pat myself in the back of the, I'm just saying that it was just a great time. There was a lot of pandemic pros that happened during this, this, this COVID, you know, and, and uh, the fact that we can help push this industry forward uh, in a positive direction. And, and most importantly, think about the farmers in the process. Yeah. You know, they're the ones, it starts with them. And um, that's why I love what y'all are doing. And so I do want to ask, though, um, what's it like to work together as, as, as partners, right? As, as your significant other, what's it like in the, in the work dynamic? Um, it's, it, it, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Day in and day out, it's awesome. I mean, you're, yeah. you're, you're working with your best friend. Um, it, it's, it's challenging in the sense that, oh, yeah. that you just have so much, there's so much time together and filming especially is a intimate thing. Like you are close yeah, to each other hold, like holding a camera or looking at a monitor, or, you know, like the, the actual space, uh, you're, you're sort of glued to each other. So uh, if, you, if, if you don't like proximity with your partner or you need like your own personal space, <laughs> don't work in media with them. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. but, but luckily we do, we've always been close that way. Um, mm -hmm but it's awesome. I think it's, it's good for personal growth. It, you're constantly having to check your own ideas, uh, against better ones. Uh, and, and, and it's growth. It's yeah. growth. It's very good. Yeah. You know, we are um, moving so fast and working so hard and have so much on the line. You know, this, this job wasn't given to us. We created it. We took, you know, our hard earned money and, and skills and, and put it into, you know, our production. And um, so, you know, that's something that we both are very, very proud of and protective over. So in a lot of ways, it's like a, like a baby, you know, taking care of our baby. Um, but our skill sets are very different where we can be like yin and yang. Mm. And so that's been, um, you know, just like with any other working relationship, just finding ways to um, make sure that you're shining and you're doing your best, but not you know, overshadowing your partner's, um, um, I guess, contributions um, mm -hmm. like that. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm more business minded. Patrick's obviously just 
much more creative. So it's like, I have to find out how we're going to pay for these things. And um, I want 15 cameras. <laughs> I'm <just> like, yeah. <laughs> models i want all the brand new ones right yeah yes yes i have to be the bad guy sometimes i'm like yeah. babe we only have 2500 bucks for this shoot figure it out okay figure out how to make it work which man. which is great uh, yeah but honestly whatever production takes uh so much that if you aren't honestly familial with the people you're working with like even if you're just with friends like there you will not survive it. Yeah. it it is a um it is a very complicated thing to bring ideas from your brain onto screen and deliver it in a way that isn't boring. Yeah. Like if you can succeed in that, if it's just not boring, you've, you've made good content. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, and, and it's very difficult and it takes more than yourself. So you have to be trusting of your partners. And in that, I feel very lucky because Liz and I are married and very happy. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, working towards bringing those types of ideas from brain to screen and not making it boring. Um, it's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. But it's, it's, it's your, it takes a lot of patience and ego checking and, and, yeah. and kindness. And honestly, we <laughs> I just, dude, if we butt heads, we smoke some weed and we get on with it. <laughs> That's the beautiful thing, right? It's like, yeah. and when you do that, right? When, if you have a, a disagreement or you bump heads for a particular project, you do that, you smoke, and then you start to do that ego goes away, right? And you start to really reflect and like, is this really worth the fight? Is this really worth the battle? Like, can we find a compromise? And so that's always a good remedy, I bet. That kind of gets you guys back in sync, you know, for yeah. sure. Oh, big time. 100%. Yeah. It's like a reason. Yeah. Um, I was going to say something, but I lost One my more time. I was going to say something, but I lost my train of thought. Um, it was, it had something to do with, uh, anyway, we'll, I'll, it'll come back. Another thing, weed, another thing weed will do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sure. So we have a really big whiteboard in our, uh, in our dining room, essentially is kind of like ground zero. And we take a lot of notes. We write a lot of notes. That's, that's what I was going to ask. So how do you come up with your ideas for your different, like the videos you produce? Like, is this an ongoing thing where you're storyboarding and writing these things out and then shooting later? Or do these ideas just come to you on the spot and you just, you go with it? Some of it is random and totally like, this would just be a great video. Let's make it. But I mm -hmm. think that we kind of group, we kind of group our ideas around the content we want to share with people. Like right now, uh, obviously sharing the story of the farmer with our docuseries Big Texas Hemp is, is, is important, but we're gearing up to really start community activation, mm -hmm. specifically as Texas legislature starts uh, in January. Yeah. Um, because we have several bills on the docket there for decrim, medical, and legalization. And we want, we, but we want legalization, but at the very yeah. least, we must have decriminalization. But if we aren't in these politicians' ears, if we aren't telling our community, email, you email, here's how you email, mm -hmm. here's a Here's a letter. We're gearing up for activ activation so that we can help our community get in these politicians ears so that we don't miss this voting cycle and get it legalized. Yeah, right. that's important. So let's talk through that process. So I know that the Texas legislature meets, what, every two years, right? So their next session is coming up. Is that, you said January? January yeah. the 12th. Mm -hmm. The 12th. January the 12th is the first day of session. And listen to this, Kevin. In six months, we will have already voted on marijuana in Texas. That's so and fast. then we will have to wait for two more years. If we don't make big progress in this session, 2023 is our next opportunity. We can't and wait that long. We can't no. wait that long. No. No, we can't. We can't. We can't. So so things that are, you know, uh, the, the themes, I think, within our own brand, if you will. We've got Grow House TX as our kind of main channel. I'm on Instagram. And so, you know, the themes there are definitely um, cannabis reform, um, you know, shining a light on farmers, hemp, um, community activations, and then just crazy videos, right? Like things that, that will get people's laugh. attention, <laughs> first and foremost, things that make us laugh. But then when you get somebody's attention and you make them laugh and then you deliver a message like, hey, have you checked out Last Prisoner Project's page lately? They're doing a lot of really great things to help cannabis prisoners get free. It's like, that's when people will will make those moves. So it's all just know that everything we put out there, we really do gut check ourselves on what message is the sending, how is this supporting kind of these central themes around our brand, and um, 
yeah, do we like it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And then we also have we have a, and then we also have a, as another outlet a, a channel on High Times TV. Yep. And we've been creating content for that for um, two and a half years. Yeah. Uh, and we those are stories that we just put on. Uh, they can be everything from an interview with a cancer patient who used cannabis to to heal, uh, to a, a zany video of an adventure we did in Portland. You know, finding cannabis events in Portland. Like yeah. it, it's it's travel. It's it's advocacy. It's it's really just more of like stuff we, we want to make and, and, uh, and show the world and, and sort of normalize the plant from a Texas perspective mm -hmm. on a national brand like High Times TV. So working with them has been great. And um, yeah, we continue to move. Awesome. Yeah. And I'll be sure to include those links to, uh, to all the different channels that you mentioned, uh, including your podcast. I know that y'all have a Grow House podcast also. So you know what we, so we started, we started Grow House podcast, 420 My Dudes yeah. was actually the name of it. Originally. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so we, we did about, I don't know, maybe 20 episodes. Then we collaborated with um, a, a CBD brand in the area from our area and Kevin, you know, there are a lot of fakes in this industry. I don't know if you knew that, but a lot of fakes, a lot of, a lot of fakes. Yes. Yeah. A lot of fakes. And, and we just, you know, and we take the approach of, we certainly aren't the experts. We are just learning alongside our community. But let's learn together. We happen to have cameras, you know, and let's, let's put it out there. And so we really do rely on um, folks who've been in the industry and who know their stuff. Some people are, are really, fast talkers and they're able to make you think that they know their stuff and they maybe don't necessarily know their stuff so um i think that was we we kind of hit a roadblock uh, at last attempt so now we don't have anything really fresh um but i mean that it's, it's out there it's all good information right and um, we just felt like it wasn't the right wasn't the right fit i think ultimately for for brand alignment if you need any guest recommendations, I have a few that really know their stuff. Um, I mean, I'm not one to add that act like I know a lot. This is why I'm doing this is to learn right. today yeah. and experts on that share. So um, yeah, if you're, we can talk offline about maybe some, some potential guests in the future that you would like to have. Definitely. Well, I mean, I'm just really proud of you because pod yeah. podcasting is hard. And, and the, the main thing that it takes is consistency. And um, mm -hmm. that is just something we have been, trying to figure out with everything else we do, podcasting is like another thing. So I'm really just like, I'm, I'm proud of you. Like you're, yeah. you're the one making it happen. So that's, that's cheers to you, my man. Absolutely, man. Thank Absolutely. you very much. That's very nice of you to say. I, I enjoy doing it. And like I said, I'm, I'm learning as I go. And it's, I know that this industry is burgeoning and there's going to be a lot of great things happen, you know, for the world overall, once it's, it's legal. And so I just want to be a part of it in some way, you know? Yes. Yeah, well, you are. <laughs> yeah, you are. I'm curious about what's happening next for you, Kevin. I, you know, what's. I mean, right now, so I've said on the podcast before, I'm, I've launched a company, Cannabinoid Nation, and it's a brokerage firm. So, I mean, I'm representing a handful of like two or three uh, farmers right now in Texas. And, you know, just like everybody, it's everybody's kind of at a standstill when it comes to like moving their product and getting it sold. And, you know, I think just because of how new it is and, and how we talked about earlier, there's bad actors and there's a lot of snake oil, you know, where oh, yeah. buying low quality CBD and or the products that contain no CBD at all. Right. And mm -hmm. and the, the farmers that are actually doing the right thing and growing a really high quality product are kind of being boxed out, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and so until the FDA uh, implements their consumer oversight, which is desperately needed, right? Um, not that, none of that's going to really change. And so um, I was actually tuning in before we got on to record. Um, the FDA just hosted a webinar recently about, um, from the women's office. And they talked about gender differences when it comes to CBD. And I'm only like 10 minutes in, but my goal is to have somebody on the podcast from the FDA to talk really about their perspective, one from a medicinal standpoint, but then also like, like what's, what's taking so long, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's literally all the reports. Every test is like CBD works. It's, yeah. it's, it's like, it's getting old. Like it's... people all the time are like, man, this hurt on me. And I started taking CBD and it healed. It's like, I know. <laughs> and listen, and listen. The fact remains that the FDA is, um, it, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it's an illusion. We're, we're, we're jumping through hoops when those hoops really do not make sense no. at all. 
Um, but we're jumping through those hoops because that's the way that, that the system is, is set up. And um, it is slowing down progress. People are dying. Yeah. And we just, I, I, I hate it. I hate that I'm like the Grim Reaper, right? <laughs> it, it always seems to be like, that's all right, let's grow. Let me roll up and tell you that we're all dying. None of us have any time to wait for the government powers to make decisions based on their limited information. You know, it's like, that is the most frustrating thing for me in the world. I mean, the reason we're doing this, we all have our personal reasons. I mean, I um, became aware of cannabis and really in my mind and in my heart, wanted to fight for it when I was in college, when my grandfather was dying of pancreatic cancer. He served two terms in, uh, two tours in Vietnam. He went back voluntarily, second time. Voluntarily, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was a medic, you know, and he's dying of pancreatic cancer in Houston. I went to um, college in Indiana. It was my senior year. And I can remember being on the phone with him and my mother and my grandmother. And all he wanted to do was just eat and just be comfortable. Um, and, and I knew, knew that I knew that cannabis could at least give him the munchies, you know? And so I was on the phone with my cousins, like, can we, we need to get poppy some weed. You know, it's just like, man, fuck that shit. Right. I'm sorry. Beat beat me out, but I, I can't I, I that's not right. There are too many people suffering. There are too many people who need this medicine now. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I have a I mean, I'm sorry to hear about your, your dad, but I and I to, but I totally get it. That's oh your your grandpa. My grandfather, yes. Yeah, your grandfather, I'm sorry. And um and I, I can relate with my grandmother. She she has dementia and years ago, probably five years ago. She was in a position where she, my parents weren't fully taking care of her. She was still living at her house, but she would never, she needed rides home and she would never stay over at my parents' house. They had a guest bedroom and she always had this fear of like somebody's in her house watching her. You know, she had this like paranoia and they had her on different medication. I, I, I don't remember exactly what it was, um, but um, I had a, a, a THC uh, edible. And I told my my dad, I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna let her try this and just kind of see what happens, you know. And I she took it and I'm telling you, completely different demeanor, so nice, not angry, not aggressive. Um, she ended up staying the night at my parents' house, and that had been three years since that happened. And she, her and my mom stayed up together holding hands and she was telling mom that she was an angel. Oh, oh wow. And so, and that's just, and that's one story, right? And I, I know that there's millions of stories like that, especially the one you just told about your grandfather. But it's like when, as you said before, when is the, the FDA going to be open to hearing these testimonials and, and allowing these companies to start conducting actual research, you know? To Absolutely. And that, that, isn't that just the biggest, like, like, crock of it all? Just we've shot ourselves so hard in the foot we can't even research this thing where every time we do any sort of research, even with shitty government given product at, in, at Mississippi University, one of the only testing facilities. We, uh, or, well, Place to grow. Yeah. That, that's where we're able to get approved cannabis for testing. The only place in this country that you can get approved cannabis for testing is the shit weed that they grow at the University of Mississippi. Have you guys also heard about synthetic cannabinoids? Oh, we sure have. We yes. sure have heard of synthetic cannabinoids. I just, I just learned about it. Celeste Miranda was on and she was telling me that a lot of the research and she's like, look, at this point, like we'll take what we can get. But like, I don't really know much about it. Like, how is it? the same is there is there there's got to be a lot of differences right I mean, well look, one is created in the lab and what is created in the earth right well of course okay? <laughs> god put one here yeah. and and the yeah. other one is created by people who who seek to control this very very powerful medicine right. well what i mean by the question is like is there is there significant differences between the actual real product and the lab the lab grown one like i mean is it even you can't even test it because it's like apples and oranges right they're completely it, it makes no sense. I don't it, it, well, it, it makes sense for some, you know, and, and that's, that's another thing that um, I think that people who are from, tr from traditional cannabis culture are, you know, kind of shaking their fists, at synthetic cannabinoid movement and not even movement. I mean, it's just the government collecting patents um, and, you know, doing the thing, things that they do. There's space for all. There's space for all. We don't deny science. We love science. I love things that are created in labs. It's so magical. 
but we also have a whole plant that grows from the earth that is actually meant for our bodies, right? So you tell me, is it is a tomato created in a lab the same as a tomato that I grow in my garden? Is it, is it good for my body in the same way? You know, I don't know, we're not doctors, we're not scientists, but something tells me that, you know, things that come from the earth, come from our terroir in our local area is, meant for us and meant to keep us healthy and keep our immunity up and all that good stuff. Yeah. That's what I believe, but maybe we're just hippies. I've never, no, yeah. I've never had a lab grown tomato or lab grown meat like they mentioned, but yeah. if you want to ask me what I think, I think it's kind of a weird concept. I'd rather have my food, you know, from like an actual cow or like, you know, or like right. produce yeah. my vegetables from a garden. Um, but no I don't, you know, it's so new to me that I don't know. It's it's strange, right? And and I think yeah. there's different reasons why I think they're doing it. Like from the the lab meat perspective, it's because of how bad um, cattle and too much cattle and it is like hurting the environment. I think so. They're they're trying to think of other alternatives to to grow this meat in a different way that's man made. I, I don't know. I'm probably butchering that, but I don't oh. know reason. I, I think you mentioned it, that maybe it's a patent thing for the government when it comes to the synthetic cannabinoids. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, we're all, um, humans are very complex. Um, we're simple, but we're complex. And, you know, not every cannabinoid, cannabinoid is meant for you or me, you know. And so it's just about, um, it's just about freeing cannabis, man, so that we can research it so that we can better understand how this medicine affects us in a real way and not with all of these bullshit hoops to jump through. Right. Um, it's, it's people just, you know, hate it. yeah. it's very frustrating. Very, very frustrating. Um, but, but it's changing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's changing every day. Yeah, yeah. man. It's changing. Well, that's a good thing to, to segue and kind of to end on. So let's let's go back to what you were saying about Texas legislature getting in January. So what are the three bills specifically? What are the do you know, like the, the bill number or what the names of each bill is and and how can people take action um, to, to reach out to these policymakers to get this moving? Awesome. Um, there are multiple bills, more than three there, that, that have been introduced for for everything ranging from decrim to full legalization. And I think there's 16 yeah, at this point. Yeah, there, and there might be more. I mean, they're, they're, they're getting at it. Um, you can find those. The big one, yeah. the big one is yeah. from Representative Joe Moody. It's House Bill 447, and it introduces a retail plan, straight up, adult use. Hmm. Um, and uh, he was a keynote, he was opening keynote at the Texans, uh, Texas MJ Policy Conference this last weekend. Um, and it was just, it's, it's an incredible, incredible bill. Um, Patrick's been doing a lot more studying on the bills, mm -hmm. um, you know, than I have. I haven't had the bandwidth. But what we are doing um, starting this week is, you know, filming our own experiences, uh, calling our state senator and state representative, and then sharing scripts uh, for people who want to do the same. Mm -hmm. um, so you can email your state senator or state representative and you can um, call them, you can set up a Zoom meeting. So we're just going to try to do all of that. Mm -hmm. um, but the number one source is the TXMJ policy. That um, Just start with that Instagram account, TXMJ policy. Heather Fazio is the director of the Texans for Responsible Marijuana Policy. Um, organization and she is a total fucking treasure. Oh, sorry. She, she's a Texas, she's a, she, but she is a Texas treasure. You're good. She's a Texas fucking treasure. That you yeah, <laughs> she is. She, she's the spear tip. She, she is. is the spear tip of this movement. And has been in it for a long time. Yeah, and if you get on the if you get on the newsletter, you just a couple times a week mm -hmm. you get reminders. You find you know you figure out what's going on. There are links, and so. She's Very quickly, you, you can get up to speed on what's happening, but we're just trying to push people to take that action because in six months, we're going to have either legal cannabis or not in Texas. Right. We'll have some form of it. Hopefully, we'll have some, we better have decriminalization by then. Um, but, you know, that, so that's what's happening. But, but th that website yeah. streamlines everything for you as well as normal. They, they're uh, Texans for Responsible Marijuana Policy and Normal work uh, together. Hand in uh, hand. And, and so both of those websites can streamline 
like finding the politicians that represent you in the Senate and the House, mm -hmm. how you connect to them, their contact information. And then they even offer things like, this is what a email to them could look like. Yeah. And, and all of them have one thing in common, personal story. Those are the things that really, really register with these politicians mm -hmm. and sway the vote. Joe, Rep. Joe Mooney talked about it in his keynote. He was hearing all kinds of information, all kinds of positive things about cannabis until one guy gave him, and he didn't even share the story. He just said, one guy gave me his tell, told me his story, and that is all I needed to be convinced. And so as you reach out to these yes. politicians, and it's really easy, um, share your personal stories. Um, and, and make those connections and, you know, be kind and, and share with them because they're representing us and they're going to get the vote right. They're going to be on the right side of history this time. Right. And, and we can, we can help steer them that way. Yes. Yeah. And I do want to mention too, there was, there's the ongoing issue of the ban on smokable hemp in Texas. Probably hearing a lot of that, getting a lot of questions on that. You know, just, just recap for anybody who's listening, who, who's not um, familiar with what's going on. Um, Smokable hemp flour was perfectly legal. There were no rules around it until, until, until the government stepped in and, and thought that, oh no, this is bad. Um, there are lots of theories around the ban on smokable. I won't go into it. Personally, I believe that law enforcement's unable to um, just differentiate between a super high quality hemp nug and a high quality uh, marijuana nug. So they were just like, no, we don't wanna give you that. Well, right now there's been an injunction on that ban, which means smokable hemp products, um, whether it's a cart or a pre-roll, those are perfectly legal here in Texas right now. In February, a judge will hear the final um, arguments and decide one way or another whether or not it is constitutional to ban a um, gold product in the way that the state is suggesting it should be banned. I mean, it's a complete mess. And I've, we have every confidence that that ban will be overturned and farmers will be able to sell their hemp in a pre-roll form, essentially. So I did want to touch on that. But, you know, the Taste of Texas Hemp Cup that's coming up in December is going to be also a very big event in like <laughs> moving everything forward. Hey, you got to get a media pass, my man. Yeah, I want to I be there. How do You're I? In? You're there. I'd love to go. I would love to go. Yes. We would love for you to be our guest there. It's, it's going to, it's, uh, so we're expecting about, um, well, it's, it's going to be, oh my gosh, there's so much. Start from on. the top. The Taste of Texas Hemp Cup, December 12th. We are, we have uh, farmers entered from all over the state celebrating hemp in Texas. They are competing for uh, the prize of, of uh, t the, the Taste of Texas Hemp Cup champion. We'll have nine categories. We partnered with the Tricome Institute for Judging, yeah. which is huge because they are writing the script on how we really uh, categorize and understand this plant beyond just indica, sativa, or hybrid. Oh, yeah. Those terms are, are relatively uh, useless if you really get into the science of the plant. Right. So they are, they are really trying to uh, streamline and help people understand this plant and classify it and, and get a working knowledge of it. Think of it like wine sommeliers. Yeah. Like that is what they are. They can take a nug and dang near tell you where it's from just from uh, looking, studying it. So they've partnered with us for the judging. Um, there's also People's Choice Awards. It's going to be a hell of a time and we're celebrating Texas farmers Woo! growing hemp in this state. Yes, Texas for and and Steve D'Angelo is one of your judges too. I saw. Yes. Steve yeah. D'Angelo is a judge. He's gonna have a special message for the Texas farmers um, that will happen during the award show. So there will be an award show during the Taste of Texas Hemp Cup. Just imagine it's a music festival. There will be food. There are gonna be vendors, and then there's gonna be this award show with special messages to our Texas farmers. We've got a lot of really cool announcements to make this week. Um, but we just announced Golden Dawn Orchestra is gonna be headlining. No way! Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so they're incredible. I don't know if you've seen them live, but I'm, my heart sunk because when you said December twelfth, I already committed to I, I'm I'm going to be the official podcast sponsor of the CBD Expo in uh, Houston. So, I so I, I'm going to miss it, guys. So I'm so sorry, but I really appreciate the uh, the invite, man. I, hopefully next year or any other event you guys have, I'll definitely be there. You know, it's just I had committed to this one before, so. I totally, we totally, totally understand. You know, this is one of the things about timing, right? We wanted to 
we wanted to, to do this um, in 2020, right after the first harvest. So many farmers are excited about it, but I know some folks are like, oh no, I'm gonna be at the CBD Expo in Houston. Some folks are coming from the Expo to the Taste of Texas Hemp Cup. Where, where is it? Where is it? Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, it's in Wimberley. Is it close? Uh, yeah, it's in Wimberley. And so, um, you know, it's about a three hour drive from Houston, but it's happening from um, noon to midnight okay. on the 12th. So from what I hear, the CBD Expo ends at like one or two on that Saturday. See, so, maybe I could pull it up. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be in touch with you guys on, on text and I'll, I'll let you know. Um, Cause I would, I would definitely love to see. It. I know that Oak Cliff cultivator, shout out to Eddie Velez. Velez. <laughs> yeah. So um, cool. No, I appreciate it. I, I want to touch on one last thing before I let you guys go. Okay. We've got big items coming up next year in Texas. We've got the legislator meeting in January. As you mentioned, they're going to talk about the smokable hemp ban and make their decision in February. So in a perfect world, everything goes smoothly and we, we get what we want, right? From the, from the cannabis perspective in Texas. What does the Texas industry look like? And we haven't really talked about industrial hemp. Do you foresee Texas stepping in to cultivate hemp for material goods, for, for the stock and fiber? You want, you want it? No, oh, man. Well, let, yeah, let me answer that yeah. part. Yes. Yes, yes, absolutely, 110%. The Texas, Texan hemp farmers are gonna move the global economy in industrial hemp, period, period, period. We don't need to get it from China anymore. No. There's no reason to get our hemp from China anymore. We can grow it right here and we can grow it in Texas. We have so many millions and millions and millions of acres that are just ready for hemp. Um, it's exciting. What we need, though, is we need money. We need in big in investment dollars in Texas to build the infrastructure to process that industrial. Because the, we, the, yeah, there really is none. And, and our documentary has taken us. Sorry, Kevin. I was going to say that again. The, Decortication, the decorticating process, the, the separating of the fiber and herd is what you're talking about with processing. Yes, yes. Absolutely. yes. and, and it's, 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 a, it's a multitude of a couple things. One, we do not have infrastructure really in America yet. We're still building it uh, to support what this plant can do. But it's also educating consumers right now and getting consumers around the idea that, look, if we demand hemp for environmental reasons, for health reasons, for getting off of, uh, of any sort of foreign trade um, for material goods, textiles, if we can convince the, the consumer that we should be demanding hemp because it is so, it's such a wonder crop. Superior. And it can provide all these different things, oil, paper, you, I, you know it. We're people of the plant, so you know it. But it is getting the consumer fired up about it. Yeah. And it's slowly happening. It's turning that wheel. That's what Big Texas Hemp explores a lot of is, is this movement towards turning, toward, turning to the plant for, for the future. Sure. Yeah. For future economy, future uh, sustainability, future health. Mm -hmm. And we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting the consumer mind around it. And thus the investment dollars to build the infrastructure are, are slowly coming. But we're, we're, yeah. it's so, we're such in that infantile stage right now. It's such a beautiful time. Uh, because it's wide open as to what can be done. So idealism, passion, we need it all. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we're asking fellow Texans to, to come and support that consumer market. Buy, yeah. buy, buy hemp, hemp, get involved in hemp, and, uh, and let's change the world. Absolutely. That's a great, great way to end it. Uh, Patrick and Liz, I really appreciate y'all being on. And I do want to have you on again um, as things evolve after, you know, say February of next year to kind of see where the dust settles when it comes to these different bills that are, are being proposed. Um, but continue to keep everyone smiling and uh, up to date as to what's going on in Texas. I, I really enjoy y'all's uh, everything that you're doing when it comes to the media production. So um, before we go, go ahead and plug uh, your social media channels and the website again one last time so people can find you guys. Woo, so we are Grow House TX on Instagram. Um, our website that's launching today, maybe has already launched, um, is growhousemedia.co. Um, Big Texas Hemp is uh, at Big Texas Hemp on Instagram. And then the Taste of Texas Hemp Cup, we have um, a website, www.tasteoftexashempcup.com. And we also have Taste of Texas Hemp Cup on IG. Um, 
you know, as well. So that's, I think it, and that's then, where yeah. you can find us. Yeah. And then just- In High Times. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Grow yeah. House on High Times TV. Mm -hmm. Duh. Can't forget High Times, man. Um, yeah, we're just, we're Grow House. So we have a channel on High Times TV. So. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much again. Really enjoyed talking with y'all and uh, appreciate everybody for listening as well. Thank yeah, you, thanks, Kevin. Kevin. You're doing thank great you. work. You're doing awesome work. And thanks for everybody listening. It's That's what it takes, man. Just listening and then taking action, buying hemp, writing a letter to your state senator. I mean, it's these are the things that are going to lead to full legalization in Texas. Boom. Yeah. 100%, 100%. Love it. Thanks again, guys. Bye. Bye, Kevin. Thank Bye. you.